Uh, okay, so good uh, good morning, good afternoon to you in, in Spain. Uh, I think I've got the Spanish uh, weather today. So I'm going to take you for a session called Game of Phones, uh, and please use the uh, chat box as much as possible as we go along. So um, as uh, Neil just said, I wrote a book recently called Mobile Learning. I've been working with mobiles in the classroom. Uh, I was trying to think just for sessions, probably um, for about 15 years now, before the phones really became smart. Um, I started using them with my students and we see phones being used all, all around now in real life and often in where we teach and where we work they're, they're kind of overlooked or even banned by the establishments as a resource. So here's your first chat box activity for today, okay? So here are three questions. If you look at your phone, why did you choose that device? What do you like about it and what would you change? All right, so you get the idea what's going on there. So a lot of you have got iPhones, some of you have got uh, Spanish phones, some of you have got Android. So if you can imagine in the classroom, we've got this kind of speaking activity going on. So the phone has become the the, uh, the tool of engagement here. So the speaking is the three questions. But as a teacher, what I'm gauging is what, uh, what technology people have. Obviously, that's going to suggest... Uh, that's going to impact upon what I can do in the classroom or outside of the classroom with the phones. It's interesting that uh, David, uh, or David, sorry, says uh, uh, he uses apps like WhatsApp. Personally, I found WhatsApp a boon to my teaching. So again, with my teaching group, most of them are on WhatsApp. So we create WhatsApp groups uh, on the phone, which is a way of extending our learning outside of the classroom. So if our students have got all these photos on their phones, why don't we tap into them? So one of my favorite pieces of homework that I gave to my students was simply take a photo, you know, so that the next lesson they're coming in with a photo of something they did and that first five, 10 minute warmer is them talking about what they did. But here I've got some adaptations, take a picture of something white. Well, that could be, you could change that to any topic. You know, if the topic of the week is clothes in the book, take a picture of some clothes, take a picture of, of the food you ate the, in the week. So as a course book writer, one of the things that I always, that you always used to get on my nerves was, you know, like when you're teaching fixed language, you know what I mean? Like phrasal verbs, idioms, binomials, those kind of things. The practice activities are very limited. But with a mobile phone, what I can actually get my students to do is contextualize language. So, for example, if my students, have, if the course book page was on idioms, I get my students to work in group and take photos that contextualize idioms. So here are five idioms represented by pictures. Imagine the engagement that the students are now getting through their mobile phone. Yeah, so, so we do the lesson on idioms, put my students into groups, they either choose the idioms from the coursework page or choose the idioms themselves uh, for it. They work in groups, they take a photo to contextualize them, and then we kind of have a little photo gallery. If you can't share the, the photos in school, then they then they, they all stand with their photos and students go around and guess the idioms. Going forward, we've got emoji, okay? Let's just look at number six, which is represent an idiom or phrase in emoji. So if I if I picked a typical student loved idiom, which is, you can't do it here, uh, you can write the words, how would you represent the idiom, it's raining cats and dogs in emoji? I think most people would probably go cloud, cat, cat, dog, dog. Okay, so you get the idea here. There are 2,666 emoji. So there's 2,666 symbols that you could tap into in learning. And this is where my WhatsApp group becomes great. Because what we do in my WhatsApp group, I like quizzes, is we, we play this continual game where we WhatsApp each other phrases and idioms, you know, and the students are constantly guessing what they are. Somebody mentioned pronunciation, and it's interesting if you look at the mobile world, how much voice is beginning to take over. I can actually get my students to practice their pronunciation into Siri. So I say, hey Siri, take a note, uh, Veronica walked very well. And, and, and you can see on the screen, uh, it's coming up uh, with, with, it, uh, with it there. And so the students can actually start seeing their own pronunciation. So this is an app called Earplay. Okay, and it's free to download. A young woman you've never seen in your life sits down at your table. She looks anxious. Pretend you know me. Do you ask questions or play along? Play along. So glad you could make it, you say. I'm starving, let's order. I think it's changing the way I'm doing listening. Because here the students are listening to make a decision. I don't know if you got it. So the story unfolds and of course stops. And it's waiting for you to make a decision. 
what I've hopefully tried to uh, show you today is how we can tap into mobile learning. I'm not suggesting that you go out and do everything at once, but hopefully, you know, the, just the use of photos is one way to get into there. You know, there is so much to explore with it. Thank you for being a lovely little audience taking part with me. If you want to try mobile learning or if you want to get some more advice about mobile learning, please send me an email. I'll be glad. There's no point in me being here for an hour just to blah, blah, blah about mobile phones. I want you to go and do it. And if you go and do it and you need help, send me an email. If you've got any questions, I'll be happy to take them. Otherwise, I'll shut up now and <laughs> thank you for your time. <laughs>